I thought I'd tell you about my life a little. My life is probably different from the lives of most people. I'm a Russian man, and I'm in my 50s, which is not the unusual part. The part about how I make my living is where things get surreal for most people. Where I'm from, others usually work mundane jobs that hardly pay for their food and shelter, but I haven't experienced financial struggles in a while. I have a mid-six-figure income in my one-man company. I'm not a software developer or a financial advisor or anything like that. I do something a bit different. I kill people on camera. Yes, I'm a snuff film director, and I handle everything on my own. I acquire the actors, shoot the films with them, and distribute the finished products to my customers. To clear things up, I call them actors, but there's no acting involved. Everything I record is 100% authentic. You would probably refer to my actors as victims of a serial killer. I wouldn't call myself a serial killer because I see myself more as an entertainer. I don't get pleasure out of killing. I'm just indifferent to it, but I surely get pleasure from the money killing gets me. Let me take you through the process of making my films and how I turn murder into money. My main source of income is mailing USBs with films to my existing customers. I use hard copies to minimize the risk of getting traced. I don't trust digital copies. I have a domain on the deep web where you find all the info necessary for subscribing to my services. The subscription costs $2,000 a month and it will get you a snuff film every month shipped straight to your door. The films last between 8 and 12 hours, depending on how fast the actor dies. Sometimes they are tough enough and I have to slit their throats or shoot them in the head if things start getting too long. But sometimes they just bleed out after a few hours and ruin the movie. I became really skilled at torturing over the years, so I know how to torture someone for a long period of time without letting them die, but occasionally things happen. You can't fully predict how much torture and harm a person can take before they die, or sometimes you just mess up when cutting someone and hit their artery or something of that nature. It's not that unlikely for an incident like this to happen after you've already covered 90% of someone's body in cuts. I'm very respected in the snuff community, and I'm a high-ranking user of multiple snuff-related deep web forums, so if I need some money fast, I just organize a red room on short notice and promote it on these forums. Yes, one of those fake red rooms that apparently don't exist, ha <laughs> ha. You know, the ones you're always hearing about on YouTube. Anyway, these red rooms go for cheaper than the DVDs because the video and audio quality is much lower. The deep web isn't the best for streaming content. But they always get flooded with viewers. So even if each viewer pays a lot less, it's still very lucrative. I made as much as $20,000 on a single live stream. You have to pay so you can watch, but then you can also pay extra to direct the torture. Nothing is off limits, because over the years I've done it all. I try to stick to more controllable methods of torture like rape, suffocating, twisting, bone breaking, or small cuts. When you do these things, you will cause a lot of pain, but the person rarely dies early on. I avoid beating people with sticks or punching their heads because it's so unpredictable. Even though people love seeing that type of violence because it's just so primal, but as I said, unpredictable. Sometimes a person can take 200 punches. Sometimes the tenth kills them. It's a lot easier to kill someone with fists or a blunt object than most would think. I only do those things if someone pays a lot of money for it on my live stream and I reserve them towards the end. The most popular form of torture is anything that has something to do with sexual abuse. People just love seeing others get raped. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, if the actor is underaged or not. Anything rape-related will satisfy the viewer. Most common thing that people like to see is stuffing large objects into the actor's vagina or ass. I've stuffed light bulbs, broomsticks, glass bottles, cans, candles, and even traffic cones into men and women. This causes them a lot of agony, but it doesn't seriously hurt them, and the fans love it. Light bulbs are really popular because you never know if it will break or not. Having a light bulb break in your vagina or asshole is the last thing you want to experience, and that's why my fans want to see it. 
It's kind of like the appeal of gambling, not knowing if it will break or not, if the actor will lose or not. I often have sex with the actors throughout the film. People love that also. I've had sex with actors before the torturing even began, and they've been tortured for hours, and even after they already died. People want to see it all. I think it's not sexual for the viewer. They just love seeing someone get dominated and overpowered as much as possible. And rape seems to be the icing on the cake when it comes to power plays, especially since it's so stigmatized in today's society. I get actors by kidnapping them. It's really easy. I never choose a specific person. I just choose a location and wait for the right target. I always go for locations with no cameras that aren't too busy, but have enough happening so that I don't have to stick around for a long time before finding someone. It's a quick process, so it's really hard to get caught in act. It takes seconds to have an actor unconscious in my van because I have a good chloroform supplier. Once they're in my van, they can't even make a sound. So I take my time with properly tying them up and muffling them in my van before I drive off with them. I go for people of all ages, races, genders, and archetypes. It doesn't really matter to me. Nobody is invincible and I know damn well what I'm doing. When it comes to women, people like seeing younger girls and older women equally. For guys, I go for masculine men. People enjoy seeing dominant men get dominated more. But as I said, I keep it diverse. I live in a very quiet Moscow suburban area with many houses and all of my killings happen in my basement. Everyone in the neighborhood has huge yards and the houses are really spaced out. Hardly any cars pass by during the day, let alone at night. With a little soundproofing, there's no chance anyone would be able to hear what's going on and catch me in the act, so I can take as much time as I want with the torture. I want to provide value to my customers. So I try to extend things as much as I can and do as much harm as possible. I don't feel bad about anything I do. You can say that's terrible, but to me, it would be terrible if I didn't provide for my family. There's not much left for me to do besides this, and I see it as my duty to take care of my parents, wife, and children, regardless of what it takes. I spent a decade in the Russian prison system, so I'm numb to this kind of violence. In the end, I just value my family more than lives of some random people. One day they would die anyway, and they probably live miserable lives, so I'm kind of doing them a favor. After the first two hours of torture, they get so delirious that they probably don't even realize what's going on, so who the hell cares? This kind of thing is a lot more common than you'd think, and it's actually really easy to pull off here as well as in certain parts of Europe. You can pull up to some unexpecting person on the street and have them in your van in seconds. You can torture them in your basement for hours without spending more than a few hundred bucks on soundproofing. You can distribute the product on the deep web with no risk of getting caught, with only minor technical knowledge. And if anything ever goes wrong, the cops here can be paid off anyway. Like I said, it's a lot easier than you think. So if you're sitting here thinking it could never happen to you, think again. Maybe someday. It will.